Yeah, I never really understood SCPs at first. Because, like, the way that they were presented originally, the way that I first read about them, was as if these were real things actually happening, like, done by the government. And people were pretending, like, oh no, this is a real thing. This is a thing that actually exists. And I'm just thinking, it's like, there is no possible way that this device can actually be real. Like, no way, no how, that is literally impossible. And then people are like, no, it is real. It's like, here's a government form with, like, 90% of the information blacked out of it. See, it totally exists. And I'm just like, but it can't. <laughs> Like, I remember reading uh, one that was a machine that whatever you type into it, it will dispense. So if you put in coffee, it'll dispense coffee. A person named Joe put in cup of Joe instead of putting in coffee, screamed in agony, and, like, researchers were able to find that the stuff that was put into a cup were actually made out of that person's, like, internal organs. Because there's a oh, cup ooh. of Joe. It doesn't create the thing, it teleports it from somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, I, I know I've done a, a little looking into that whole, that whole SCP thing, and it's just like... <coughs> the thing is... It's people playing pretend. Based on how, the, whole, based on how the, the lore of it all suggests that the whole institution is run, uh... Yeah, I can see why people would be very easily uh, led to believe that this is actual government. Um, because it's absolutely stuff the government has done or would do. <laughs> uh, given the chance. But it's just people playing make-believe and doing the whole, Oh, well, you know, my OC is stronger than your OC. You know, I, I don't... I think it's actually relatively rare when they actually, like, directly compare uh, SCPs in any of the things. Generally because, lore-wise, it's supposed to be that, yeah, one of them is dangerous on its own. You don't usually want to kind of <clears throat> expose Mix? one to another one. Uh... At least not in an uncontrolled environment. I still remember being basically pressured into playing a game where you, like, manage and control and, like, take care of SCPs like it's a zoo or something. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I think I own that game. Uh, and I think I they remember should. finding out about a uh, Body Meat Corporation, I believe. Probably something like that. I think I have a few videos on that. And... Because, yeah, someone told me, it's like, oh, you should totally play this, you should totally play this, you should totally play this. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll play it. I played a few days of it, it's like, meh, because the entire thing is, oh, all of your people are probably going to die at any given time. And on later days, we'll just decide that all of your people die. And you have to be prepared for the chance that, you know, every SCP is going to escape and kill all of your people at once. That's SCP it's like, for you. That doesn't sound like fun for me. I don't know. Other people surely have fun with that. I didn't. I found the fairies SCP. Or the pixie SCP. And I was all like, yep, I'm sticking with these. And that's all I'm going to do. Can I find more like this? Thank you. Mm-hmm. Alright, let's see if I can defeat this here monster. The silliest thing is I probably could, I just have to not be dumb about it. Well, good luck on that front. Actually, wait, I have beat one of these before. Was it when you were already a kid, or was it the old version of you? 
news like last episode. <laughs> oh, okay. Last episode, two episodes ago, something like that. Bam! I will say, as someone who basically jumped from playing Yu-Gi-Oh to playing Magic, the differences between the games is kind of staggering. Oh. Like in Yu-Gi-Oh, if you have a card you want to play, you can essentially just play it. Unless it's a like a monster card that requires tributes. Uh -huh. But like but like a uh, spell card, yeah, you can just play it. That's why part of greed is so absolutely broken in Yu-Gi-Oh, because like you spend because one card and you get two. Yeah. But there are cards in Magic that have the entire purpose of draw two cards. And those cards are either, like, okay or just generally bad. Like, one of the best parts of the game is draw three cards. For one mana. If they're... I mean, to be fair, being able to draw a card for a zero mana was good enough to be banned in modern. There, uh, there was a time back when like the Phyrex first Phyrexian set was coming out, new Phyrexia I believe, when they decided to play with Phyrexian manas. Uh, Phyrexian mana could be paid with one mana of the color indicated or with two life. So the whole idea was, like, yeah, you could, you know, pay off of, pay from your own self in order to cast spells, or just pay mana like usual. And it turned out to be an absolutely broken feature that should not have been made in the first place because, oh my gosh, that was way too useful. Uh, including one particular card that just cost a single Phyrexian blue mana, so you could just pay two life for it. Look at target player's hand. Draw a card. Like, the point of it was to, you know, play it in 1v1, look at your opponent's hand to see what they have, so you can, like, prepare yourself to play against it. Oh, and also it draws a card, because that effect isn't quite good enough for, you know, potentially zero mana. So of course people started playing it, it's just, yeah, I'll pay two life and draw a card. Yeah, I use this, it just replace itself, draw a card. Oh, and I guess I also get to look at someone's hand. Yeah, I remember playing CEDH games, and, they're bas and that would basically be in every blue deck, because Again, two life, especially in like Commander, is nothing. And again, it got banned in modern because it was too good. <laughs> but there are cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that's just like draw a card that don't get played because they are way too bad. <laughs> I believe trap cards. There's a trap card that I think it's Jar of Greed. Uh, just, yeah, draw one card. That's it. It just replaces itself. Terrible, never sees play, completely bad, terrible, out of trash card. Versus... I forget what the card is. Goblin Charity or something? Not Graceful Charity. A spell card that's draw a card, your opponent gains 1,000 life points. That's limited to one and people still run it in every deck. Because of the difference between, like, a spell card and a trap card. Being so distinct, and it's like... Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! It's like, yeah, you can have as many as five monsters and as many as five spells and or trap cards. Magic. Yeah, how many can you fit on your board? We'll stack them on top of each other, because you can go further. 
And then there's the Pokemon card game. Where a zero cost draw three cards card is uh, considered to be absolute garbage. Apparently, that's what I've been told. I played the Pokemon card game for a bit, what, last year, year before, something like that? It's alright. I made uh I made a custom Sylveon deck. Oh right, duh, can't go that way. Of course not. But I made a nice custom Sylveon deck. That was pretty fun to play with. Where the hey do I go again? Is it oh is it just up there? I think it is. No? I am losing myself in here. I don't still have to flip every switch. Do I? So I'm pretty sure that that door right there is able to just flat open. Yeah, that door just opens from this side. There isn't a, even a door here anymore. Okay, what? When is the door not a door? When it's a jar. Oh. <laughs> yep, yeah, you have to defeat all the monsters in one go. Did I ever tell you I designed my own card game? Probably. I'd even made, like, starter decks for it. They were... I mean... It was whatever. <laughs> well, I say starter decks. It was actually just one deck. That I'm pretty sure I actually printed it out at my grandparents' place. Found a place where you could, like, print out cards and, like, fold them... Fold the paper over itself so the cards can basically have, like, backs. I have them sitting in a drawer somewhere. <laughs> and I have somewhere, I have, like, a notebook with, like, a page, like, half a page of different cards that could have been made. I remember at one point I really wanted to try, like, making, like, a starter set. Make a couple of decks that can play against each other. Get them printed out at some, like, you know, print custom cards place. And try to see if I could <laughs> convince people to actually play it. Whee. In order for a card game to be good... Or at least, you know, like of the CCG or TCG variety, it has to have some sort of uh, resource system. Magic the Gathering has mana. Yu Gi Oh!'s resource system is the amount of cards you have. <laughs> Pokemon has, I don't know, certain trainer cards only being usable once per turn. I mean, I'm pretty sure it, it also basically has the equivalent of mana. Well, that's just for, the, like, the Pokemon's attacks. They can still, unless the ability is specifically once per turn, the energy doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah, you can attack once per turn, and that ends the turn. Always really strange to play a card game where attacking ends the turn. After getting so used to doing stuff in main phase 2 and magic. 
That's apparently like a level up moment in magic when you realize that you should wait until main phase two to cast your stuff. If it's not actually going to benefit your combat step, you should hold on to it and wait so the other player thinks that you're going to do stuff during combat. Oh. Also, today was pre-release day at my local game store, but I forgot that today was actually Saturday. So I didn't wind up going. Oh. What, what does... What, what does it being Saturday affect? Because today is pre-release day. Saturday. Yeah, that, that is the information you've already provided, but why does the fact that it's Saturday affect whether or not you are going to be able to go? Because I had forgotten that it was Saturday. I... So since I didn't know that today was pre-release day, I didn't, you know, prepare myself and go to the pre-release. Okay, so, so I, what I, you mean is... What, basically, what you are saying is that you didn't know that today was pre-release day. Yes. And pre-release day is, I assume, always on Saturdays? At my LGS, yes. Some of them have them on different days, some of them have them on multiple days. I went to one that apparently had like 20 pre-releases in a weekend. That was stupid, really. And rather obsessive, but they did it anyway, even though they're really not supposed to do that. Because really it's just a case of people wanted the new cards and they could only legally get the cards a week early if they attend a pre-release, so the store just kept running pre-releases over and over again. People just open up the cards, maybe play game one, and then go, yeah, nope, I'm scooping. They're starting up another pre-release and I want more cards. Which is apparently actually a thing that Wizards of the Coast did not want stores to do. So I don't know how well that worked out for them. Also, some stores have a midnight pre-release, but my store isn't busy enough to have enough interest for that. But really, you haven't lived until you've gone to a midnight pre-release. It is... It is a very draining experience. I still remember going to one pre-release at a store. And there were like six of us like sitting around a table waiting to get our pre-release packs, which have, was it, one promo card, six booster packs, and a sp uh, spin down. You know, like a 20-sided die, but with the numbers all in order. To use for life tolls. And they got the they got a pink spin down, and everyone, literally everyone else at the table, uh, asked to trade for their pink spin down. Well, of course. And they kept it for themselves. Of course. I know, it wasn't me that got the pink spin down. Of course not. You pink stupid... spin downs are for... are for good girls. <laughs> pink spin downs are for winners? Thank you. I still remember one pre-release event, uh, there was a set, a number of years ago, that had, uh, special cards implemented, basically one booster pack in, like, a hundred, or one in two hundred. No, no, I think for that set it was, like, about one in thirty have a special card that was put out, so it wasn't legal in the standard format, but it was legal if you got them in limited, special art of cards, whatever. Depending on the card itself, you could sell them for, like, you know, $10 to, like, a couple hundred dollars, essentially. One person at my LGS pulled three of these in their pre-release kit. Jesus. And at least two of them were in the same color, so they were able to use both of those in their pre-release deck. And yeah, they won the whole event. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah, luck of the draw.
There's this one time, I don't know if it was a pre-release or just a normal limited event, whatever, but it was Two-Headed Giant. I had, like, four friends at the time, or three friends at the time who also played Magic. I asked all of them if they wanted to go and do Two-Headed Giant together, but uh, none of them, but they all said no. I get to the place, and the three of them... Plus, another of their friends had already formed two two-headed giant teams. Without telling me that they were already planning on going. So that was kind of disappointing. Uh, so I formed a two-headed giant team with, you know, random person that I found at the store. Basically, I paid for his entry, and in exchange, I'd get all the cards that, and price that we opened. Except one specific, like, $2 card that he had wanted. So it's like, okay, fine, sure. Which we actually opened in our packs. So, hey, he got his reward for participating with me. And I wound up, uh, well, we wound up getting paired with one of my groups of friends. And that was like an absolute nail biter of a game. Because in Two Out of Giant, you're allowed to communicate with your partner, obviously. But it was generally uh, expected that any communication with your partner would be, you know, verbal, so the other team can hear it. So if you say, like, oh, wait for them to cast this spell, and it's like, oh, you should hold up your counter spell so it, to use it on them, then the other team knows that you have a counter spell to use. <laughs> wait, excuse me, did one of them open just heal? Oh, excuse you. Well, excuse you, princess. So I'm attacking for about six damage at a time. And they just healed for basically ten attacks. I stunned you! How the flip did you heal? I, wait a sec. When I attack them, they're supposed to run away. Ugh. Part of the issue with using the watering can. After you make your attack, you basically have to wait, like, five seconds before you can move again. Oof. Uh, what? Well, anyway. So we're getting down in turns. Like, they have us dead on board. They have enough power in their creatures that if they attacked with everything, we just lose the game. And if we lose the game, we lose the match. Uh, but like, I look at my hand. I don't have anything that I can put out to stop them. Look at my partner's hand. They don't have any, like, extra creatures to put out. But they do have a very specific uh, spell in hand. So I tell the guy, hey, wait for them to attack, you cast this, we're good. But of course, my friend across the table hears me say that. So he, so they go to their turn. And they go, okay, main phase one, before we attack, I'm going to cast, like, 
this whatever spell I don't even remember what he had cast. If it was like another creature or, or what. And I went, ha! Huh, you fallen for a trap card. My partner played his spell, which was counter target spell, deal three damage to the control of that spell. And it was just enough to win us the game. Nice. If they if my friend had not cast a spell, we would have just lost. <laughs> I do want to say here, based on, you know, the way that, you know, that your friends behaved, I don't know that I would classify them as friend, but, yeah. uh, otherwise, yep, seems, seems fitting. Yeah. Oh, also, when you do two-headed giant, you can make, like, a team name. My control did what? You can set yourself as a team name for like what you want your team to be called instead of it being like uh Claire and Azura versus John and Smith basically and one pair of them called themselves these guys and the other pair called themselves those guys <laughs> round one pairings went up and got announced to the small room uh these guys versus those guys and like everybody cheered <laughs> It was really interesting to live, like, about a ten-minute drive away from a uh, game store, though. That was really nice. Because it was, uh, Warp 3 in Millwoods Mall. Mm -hmm. And that was back when I was living in Beaumont, so it's, like, five-minute drive into, Edm into, like, the bottom of Edmonton. Can you shut up? And, like, about five-ish minutes... Uh, to get to the mall. So, like I said, very convenient. These two would just stop bloody healing themselves. If there's just one of these little demon things to fight, this would not be nearly as difficult. Excuse you. Your excuse. Well, like that time that I bought Chandra to uh, pre-release, and she wound up pulling like a forty-dollar card. Claire, what's up? Do you want to know what I just uh, discovered? These things have an inordinate amount of health. Mm, no, it it has nothing to do with that. Oh. I discovered uh, that. that you know, when we left Minecraft last, uh, nobody turned off the minecart. Yeah, so now it's just kind of stuck there? Yeah, now it's stuck in the middle. I mean, at least that's, like, easy to fix. No, not really. Now I have to find my way into it and find out where the heck it is, having to break through one of these, uh, fires. Oh, careful. Uh, the fires... Don't drop campfires when they're destroyed. Okay, so how the hell are we supposed to get in there? I don't know, break the wall instead? You see, the wall is made out of wall. Yes. Yeah. And I, I love how I, you know, created and implemented a safety feature just to prevent this from happening. Well, you didn't hit your safety feature. I don't know how your safety I... feature works. I didn't get the... I didn't... The safety feature is hit the lever and wait five minutes, which I had actually told you. Yeah, I didn't know if you had hit the lever before you had left. So when I said, when I had showed it to you and building it saying, okay, this is in the, you know, it's going position. And then you, you edited it anything. for, like, two hours. Huh? You had said, this is the going position, and then you spent, like, two hours editing it. What do you mean, two hours editing it? 
You mean adjusting the redstone and everything? I'm back about after I finished all of that. Um, yep. Anyway, on a more depressing topic, when I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! is because my cousin had got me into it because he wanted to, you know, play it together, whatever. But also, he'd, like, cheat constantly. Because, like, that was, like, when the show was just first coming out, you know, like, uh, Duelist Kingdom, whatever. And so, he refused to actually read the rules of how it was played, and would just go by, Oh yeah, this is the kind of stuff they do in the anime, I guess, maybe. Like, monsters don't require tributes, for example. And also, uh... uh what the hell? Well... Well, now I need to redo this whole thing. Monsters don't require tributes. If you have any spell or trap card, uh, like, behind a monster, then you can use it to protect that monster for one turn. Not just something like Wabaku, but something like Wabaku only protects one monster, not all of your monsters. Uh, if you want to use... Oh, come on and calm down. If you want to use something like Dark Hole, you can return your strongest monster back to your hand and then use the Dark Hole. At least he can, I can't. Like... Yeah, he would win every game, because he would always just cheat to make himself win. And that wasn't just Yu-Gi-Oh, that was like everything we played, he would always win because he would just cheat and then make himself win. And who is this? My cousin. Sounds like a jerk. Yeah. I mean, he got his comeuppance in the end. Uh, one of his friends wound up robbing him of, like, hundreds of dollars of, like, audio equipment. Uh, yep. Is this a game over? Yeah, it's just a game over. Alright, so it turns out I can't fight these fellas. Because my damage output does not surpass apparently their healing. If I knew how much health they had, that could be a different conversation. But I don't, so, oh well. Sleep, 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 sleep. <laughs> Played sort of CDH today, and one of the people in the pod I was in seemed to be relatively new to CDH. <laughs> In one of the games, he handed me the win, and in another game, he basically handed another player the win. Both On both occasions, allowing us to tutor when he really should not have allowed us to tutor. <laughs> Curiously enough. Lethal Company was fun. <laughs> I was too busy just having fun playing the game to actually be scared of the game. <laughs> like, I went outside of the uh, building, whatever, and there's Chandra being chased around by like a wild dog. And I just jumped out. I was like, ooh, doggy! 
jump down, let it chase me around for a little bit. You know, as one does. Well, I wanted to play with the mutant doggy. Oh, wait, I can get a little bit of money. We'll do this. Yeah, okay. Don't worry, y'all. I'm not planning on going all the way back in. Just about this far. Shouldn't there be drops and stuff here? Or did I actually empty all that out last night? Oh. No. I take you just uh, being busy with the mining and the crafting. Yeah, trying to fix this. Fun, 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 fun. Yeah, because you have the water and campfires over the turns in addition to the. Uh the actual regular shafts. Uh, unfortunately, water flooded, which kind of um, went and messed everything up. I don't know. Did it, like, ruin a bunch of campfires? Oh, no, no. It wrecked the circuitry. Oh. Yeah, that's a bit worse. And the thing is, I don't know if it destroyed any of the uh, tracks. Also, apparently some bees spawned down there, and I don't know how or why. <laughs> oh, oh great! The damn thing stopped again. Well then. Oh. Now that I think I do. Wonder if... I what if I could do pre-release on Arena? Do I miss a chance to do so on my like, LGS? Wee! No? Based on the fact that I now have a couple of signs in my inventory, yes, it looks like some of the water did leak through and also wreck some of the stuff in the thing. Great. And meanwhile, while all of this stuff is happening, there are also, what, dozens of guardians just flailing around? <laughs> guardians and at least a couple of bees. I wonder if the guardians and the bees are going to fight each other. Okay, uh, good news. It does look, it looks like the, uh... Ah, that's 
that's what happened. Are guardians and bees enemies? Nobody ever taught me about the fins and the bees. Anyways, the good news is it doesn't look like any tracks got messed up. Okay. Just two of the signs. For how many days we've been putting into, uh... We've been putting into this thing, it better pay off. Eventually. I just don't understand why you wanted this one to- Why you wanted the wall sec- Like, the wall parts of the turns. To because of if I wall. don't put- was it the wall part of the turn to be wall? Yeah, you put campfires here and left this gap open, rather than making it solid wall. And that is what caused it to flood. I mean, yeah, it could have been solid wall, but I needed at least... But if I didn't put the campfires there, then the guardians could get trapped underneath the campfires and thus mess with the minecart. Could have just put solid wall there. You're right. Wait. Yeah, how could they get trapped under the campfires? If there were no campfires there, but also no wall there, they could yeah, flop so, around, flop, yeah. flop. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, is why didn't we go with solid wall? Uh, because while I was building it, making a solid wall would have been more awkward. <laughs> Whole bunch of materials to ship out now. Gotta think long term here. It was fine until it got flooded. I mean, here's the thing if I had known that you were doing that before you started adding in the water, I would have brought this up at the time. Oh shit, tomorrow's going to be a busy, busy day. Still have to do my regular recording, but also going to have uh, my pony game, which is the team is going to be going through a giant maze, essentially, because they still don't want to go to the local town and talk to any pony. And then have a D&D &D game where who knows what's going to happen. I wonder if we're actually going to fight something this time. <laughs> it's like the weirdest D&D &D game. Everyone's made like OP characters because the combat is so absolutely brutal. But now we're just like not having combat anymore. <laughs> It's like, okay, since all of your characters are made to actually survive my combat, let's have another social encounter. And it's like, kill the one that encouraged, wound up encouraging everyone to make, like, beefy, strong, tanky characters. What do you mean, let's be social? Like, in the last session that we had that actually had combat, we all got sprayed with, like, hydrochloric acid. Jesus. Yeah, there is, like, a rickety wooden doorway, like, as the only, uh, way in or out of, uh... God, I forget what it is, like, the, the frog people. Frogs. No. This is a certain name for it. whatever. Low tech frog people, you go like underwater, get to the entrance, there's a little like big old air pocket. 
rickety old wooden door on a rickety wooden wall in the middle of a cave. Burst through the door, it turns out there was a trap of like hydrochloric acid spray or some sort of acidic spray hit all of our characters. <laughs> Anyway, and it's like, huh, that doesn't really fit, like, their tech level. Also, still somewhat annoyed at this game for not giving barely any storage space. There's probably some way to actually increase storage space, and I just somehow never did it. Like, these things are actual storage or something, you know? Which, yeah, of course, all of it is in the school and none of it is actually, you know, in the player-owned house. For some reason, all of the upgrades are at school. <laughs> Not that this is particularly big, either. Help? I don't think that's how it goes, but you carry on. <laughs> what the heck? No! Damn it! I see what happened. those four leaf clovers are fully grown, there isn't a lot more that I can keep doing. So I guess just work through these dailies and then just like grind a bunch. Woo, grind. Yeah, I'd be on that there daily grind, huh? Said sure, not chirp. Chirp. You're weird. Oh, you're just noticing. No comment. I still have to go up there and water stuff, so let's go up there and water some stuff.
Hey, wanna know something, uh, stupid? Sure. Other than me. Uh, there is a Pokemon game that has different difficulty levels. Oh? So you can play it on easy mode or play it on hard mode. Yeah, uh, in order to unlock uh, easy mode, you have to play through the entire game. Then you get an item that unlocks easy mode for a new gameplay. However, you can't just, you know, start a new game on, like, the same cartridge, because then you'll delete the item that can allow for easy mode. So you have to trade it to another game, start, start the new game, then trade it back to unlock easy mode. I think it's Black 2, White 2, where if you play through one of them, then you get an item for easy mode, but if you play through the other one, you get an item for hard mode. Okay. Uh, that's not where the stupidity ends, by the way. Um, the stupidity leads even further in that easy mode is actually more difficult and hard mode is actually easier. Of course, this is all speculation based off stuff other people have said. I've been to actually, you know, play through the games to find out for certain or looked at the code or blah blah blah, anything. But according to what people had said, easy mode just reduces the level of... Yeah, the level of the Pokémon that trainers that you fight use. However, it doesn't actually change their stats. So the fights are exactly as difficult except that their Pokemon numerically have lower stat, but lower levels, but same stats. So, on the surface, easy mode versus hard mode versus normal mode doesn't change anything. Except in that generation of Pokemon, if you fight against a Pokemon that's a lower level than you, you get much less experience. So, considering that your Pokemon team would have to be, like, the same level as in normal mode to fight against them, you will get a lot less experience for fighting against these trainers than you would in normal mode. Which means you have to grind a lot more just to be on par with normal mode. Hard mode, meanwhile, increases the level of uh, other trainers' Pokemon, but doesn't change the stats so you get more XP, so you can level up more, and make the game easier. Hmm. So not only does someone have to beat the game before someone can play in a different difficulty setting, but also the difficulty of the settings is like, flipped! <laughs> hard mode is easier and easy mode is harder. That sounds poorly designed. I mean, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, there is a missable item that you can get to adjust something like in the settings menu that the game should have by default. Oof. I think it's like a volume slider or something to change the volume of like different specific things. Yeah, you have to buy it in game and apparently you can just miss it and not have that accessibility feature. <laughs> now, when you say miss it, do you mean, like, permanently missable? That's what the person implied. I kind of want to go to my game and see if I can still find the item. To see if it actually is permanently missable. Also, I just realized, um... In our old temporary storage, we have a lot of enchanted items that we kind of, uh, <coughs> forgot were sitting in these chests. Old temporary storage? Oh, right, yeah, that thing that I had made, yes. Yeah, on the enchant, on the enchant, uh, magic level. Yeah. yeah, I put a whole bunch of items in there, and you get a lot of enchanted gear in that mod pack, I gotta say. What if they changed? 
What has this update actually changed, anyway? Not sure. It doesn't appear to have uh, messed up my... Um... <clears throat> what do you call it? God, my... God, brain, hang on. It doesn't appear to have messed up the fact that I am probably still going to be able to put a ton of enchantments on... Uh, on my final gear, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure what actually did change. Today is a very, very cold day. My window wasn't, like, properly latched last night, so now the whole apartment is, like, freezing. Probably why Simon was so fine with uh, being under the covers. Yeah, that that could be a factor. I have a feeling that Simon has crawled himself back under the covers again. Frankly, I don't blame him. <laughs> What a weird enchantment. I thought you were going to say what a weird kitty, but he's not a weird kitty. No, oh, your, your kitty is adorable. Exactly. <laughs> Wait a second. My kitty isn't a food receptacle item that was primarily aimed towards toddlers. Okay. Adora. Ball. 